Yellowstone National Park is a huge recreational area in the United States that covers almost 9,000 square kilometers. Most of Yellowstone lies in Wyoming, and it also stretches into neighboring states, Montana and Idaho. The world's oldest national park is renowned for its incredible natural beauty that includes canyons, alpine rivers, hot springs, as well as hundreds of species of animals. Yellowstone also sits atop a massive volcano, so big in fact that it's officially known as a supervolcano. This supervolcano is roughly 50 by 70 kilometers wide, and is last thought to have erupted some 640,000 years ago. However, what has some people nervous is the prospect that it will most likely erupt again. And if Yellowstone erupts, the damage caused could be catastrophic. A supervolcano differs from an ordinary volcano in the sheer force and ferocity of its eruption. The term is applied to any volcano that is thought to be capable of ejecting more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic rock and ash. To give you an idea, that's about 50 times greater than the Krakatau eruption in Indonesia. The 1883 Krakatau eruption killed over 36,000 people, which was largely due to the ensuing tsunamis that hammered the Japanese coastline. A Yellowstone eruption would not only prove to be immediately deadly to anyone in the vicinity, but the aftermath could have dire consequences for not just North America, but for the rest of the world. But first of all, how likely is it to erupt? It's already erupted three times. 2.1 million years ago, then 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent was around 640,000 years ago. While these dates may seem very, very far back and almost too far back to comprehend and take seriously, geologists are convinced that one day Yellowstone will produce another massive blast. Currently, the national park sits atop of three overlapping calderas. Caldera is the Spanish word for cauldron, and they're a kind of bowl-shaped depression in the earth, caused by previous eruptions. When a supervolcano erupts, the amount of molten lava and rock emitted is so vast that the ground holding it simply collapses into itself, creating a caldera. There are several of these calderas scattered throughout the world, in both North and South America, New Zealand, Russia, and Indonesia. These previous eruptions provide scientists with clues as to what might happen should Yellowstone erupt again. The Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would go something like this. A plume of heat would rise up from deep within the Earth's mantle, melting rocks in the Earth's crust, which lies above the mantle, closer to the surface. These hot, molten rocks are also known as magma. The magma forms a chamber of semi-solid rock, water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide, and other gases. As additional magma is added to the chamber over thousands of years, the land above would then begin to rise ever so slowly. This effect will be a gradual dome shape that's created inch by inch the, by growing pressure from magma beneath the surface. Cracks and fractures then start to appear when the volatile mix of molten rocks and gases can no longer be contained. They simply burst through the surface in an almighty explosion. Geologists have compared this eruption to opening a bottle of cola after shaking it vigorously. It's important to note, however, that at the moment, the crust and mantle beneath Yellowstone are still basically solid. While they're certainly hot, they are yet to form into the liquid magma, which is the catalyst for eruptions. Scientists figured that the underlying chambers would have to be at least 50% magma for an eruption to take place. Of course, this is just guessing, as no supervolcano has erupted in the history of humans on Earth. If things were to change, though, and the amount of magma increased, the situation could get fairly ugly. The predicted consequences of such a massive eruption are devastating. For starters, anyone living in close proximity to the blast would be lucky to survive. This means at least 100,000 people could be killed by the initial explosion. The volcanic lava flows wouldn't pose too much of a problem, as scientists have gauged previous eruptions at Yellowstone to determine that lava spreads only reach several kilometers from the center. What is concerning, though, is the ensuing ash clouds and gas emissions that would severely affect the people, animals, and the environment. Lake Toba in Indonesia is one of the world's largest calderas and is thought to have been created from a colossal eruption some 74,000 years ago. The Mount Toba eruption propelled so much ash into the stratosphere that it created a catastrophic volcanic winter. This volcanic winter lasted for six years, leading to a 1,000-year-long ice age that severely decimated the global human population. It's estimated that this ice age reduced the world population to around 10,000 people. Volcanic ash showers from Yellowstone would spread throughout the American Northwest and Midwest regions. Scientists have projected that areas being affected by ash clouds could even stretch as far as Toronto, to the northeast, and Austin, Texas, to the southeast. These showers would prove to be highly dangerous, potentially killing many more people and animals. Volcanic ash isn't the soft, flaky substance we <laughs> might think of like remnants of a campfire. Instead, volcanic ash is hard and sharp, almost like tiny shards of glass. When breathed in, it cuts the lungs and it forms a cement-type substance in the body, making it deadly for humans and animals alike. 
This ash would also seriously interfere with the mechanisms of planes and automobiles coming into contact with it. The ash clouds would almost certainly affect large areas of the American North and Midwest, with rivers, lakes, and streams being clogged up with ash deposits from the sky. And that's just the beginning of the potential ecological damage. The ash clouds from Yellowstone supervolcano would threaten to block out sunlight over much of North America. This would not only lower temperatures, but would understandably have a dire effect on agriculture and food supplies. The ash and various gases emitted by the Yellowstone eruption would remain in the stratosphere for months after, and possibly even years. This would block out crucial energy and light from the sun that would result in lower temperatures and diminished levels of crops and agricultural produce. At worst, it might lead to mass food shortages and even famine, with the economic and environmental impact being felt around the world. It would make a significant part of North America uninhabitable, with homes destroyed, water supplies contaminated, and crops and livestock left to perish. Serious stuff indeed. If all this sounds apocalyptic, don't worry, it's very much the most dramatic worst-case scenario we could kind of envision. Experts have been quick to point out to anyone raising the alarm that any signs of volcanic activity at Yellowstone will be well telegraphed and advanced. Nevertheless, geologists have pinpointed a giant flume of hot rock lying deep in the Earth's mantle. This hot rock is roughly 640 kilometers below the Earth's surface, and it serves to melt rock in the upper chambers, creating small pools of magma. As more magma builds up, the Yellowstone surface heaves upwards. Small earthquakes can relieve this pressure by allowing hydrothermal liquids to seep out, causing the ground to subside. Scientists have noted that since 2004, more and more of Yellowstone caldera has been surging upwards at a rate of almost 3 inches per year. Which leads experts to predict that when it comes to a Yellowstone eruption, it's a question of when, not if. Optimists suggest a small-scale eruption similar to that at Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Uh, that, that might be in the cards. The Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 killed 800 people and caused over $200 million in property damage. Planes flying near the region after this eruption encountered severe ash clouds that caused a further $100 million in damages. The Mount Pinatubo eruption could be seen as... It could have been a lot far worse, basically. Experts had been tracking volcanic activity, paying special attention to a growing series of mini-earthquakes that signaled a burgeoning buildup of magma near the Earth's surface. Yellowstone is being closely monitored as well, and many believe that minor earthquakes or hydrothermal explosions are greater hazards. The National Park is additionally home to the world's tallest geyser, which is a hot spring that shoots off boiling water and steam into the sky intermittently. However, the threat of earthquakes in this highly seismic area is probably the most likely danger to concern ourselves with. The sensational image of a volcano erupting captures our imagination. We think of people in Pompeii dashing to escape deadly seas of lava and towns being buried under volcanic rock. The reality, though, is that volcanic eruptions bring a range of other threats that are much more dangerous than lava flows. Earthquakes, tsunamis, ash clouds, and gas inhalation are the very real dangers brought about by an eruption. As for Yellowstone, things are largely unknown. Will it erupt again? Almost definitely. Will it happen during our lifetimes? Who knows? But we can rest assured. If it does erupt on our watch, we'll be ready for it.